All right, here we are with Autogen version 0.2.8, and this is a big update. And the reason I say that is because it has a breaking change. And maybe you're wondering, well, why is this such a breaking change, or what does that even mean? Well, first off, that means that if you were to upgrade right now to the newer version, and you try to run the current code you had right before you upgraded, there's a good chance it's not gonna work, and it's not gonna run, and you're gonna get a specific error. And the reason is because now, code execution by default happens inside of a Docker container instead of just locally on your machine. Now this property use Docker, it's always been there. I've never used it. There's a good chance you've never used it and we never had to because if you didn't even know what Docker is or you don't know what it, you didn't know what it was, or you don't know what it is now, that was fine. It didn't matter before, but now it kind of does, right? You still don't have to use Docker. You don't have to download the software, which I'll show you how to. You don't have to do any of that stuff, but you have to know what to do so you don't need to use it. Or if you want to try it out, you can as well. So let's just look at some code. I'm going to show you what the error that you're probably going to get when you upgrade, and then I'll show you how to fix it. All right, here we have a simple example, but the first thing we need to do is upgrade Autogen. So to do that, open up your terminal and you'll say pip install dash dash upgrade pi Autogen. Okay, and I already have it upgraded, so you'll get something a little different, but it's going to go ahead and upgrade to 0.2.8. Now when it's done, this example, we have a simple config list where we get the open AI key and our model from this file, OAI config list. This will be in my GitHub, so you can look at this. Um, and then we have two agents. We have the assistant agent where we just give it a name. We assign the LLO config basically to the config list. And then we have the user proxy agent, and this is where it matters. Okay, this is the difference. So we create the user proxy agent, we give it a name. That's not different. And we've seen this before. You have a code execution config. And this basically has single property for working directory. And this means that if we execute this and the assistant agent actually executes the code that, or creates code that we want it to, the user proxy agent will execute that code. And if when we're done, it'll put it into a directory inside of our project called coding. Okay, so we just upgraded. Let's see what happens when we just run this. So you'll say Python three main.py and run it. And look at this error. Make sure Docker is running. Set use Docker to false in code execution config. Okay, this is the error that you're probably gonna see when you try to run this the first time, okay? And this is the breaking change. This is what I mean that if you upgrade it and then you try to run something without changing anything else, it's not gonna work. Now, in order to make this work, say you don't wanna use Docker, all we do in the user proxy agent up here in the code execution config, this is the new property use Docker. It's not new, but we just never really use it that much. So you'll just say comma, use underscore Docker, and then you'll just say false, okay? That's all you gotta do if you don't wanna use Docker. Now, if we rerun this, python3 main.py, it should start working. And as you can see, it is. It's now actually gonna execute because we told it not to try to run code inside of a Docker container. Okay, so it finally executed the code, uh, created the Python file under the coding directory over here, and it showed me a plot of, what is this, uh, by landmass, the top 10 countries. Okay, apparently Earth is a country. Perfect. Now something else you can do if you don't want to execute code at all, which is perfectly reasonable in some cases, you don't necessarily want to execute code. You can just delete this part and just set that to false, and then you don't have to worry about it either because you're not actually executing code and you don't have to do anything else. Now, what if we wanted to use Docker? Well, what we have to first do is go to the website to download the software and install it. Let's see how we do that. Okay, so now how do we get Docker? Well, Docker is a software that you have to download. So the first thing is, let's go to their website and that is to docker.com. So if you come here, click on this uh, search page, then you just click download for Mac, okay? I already have it downloaded, so it's gonna download it for me. But once you have it downloaded, you just simply install it and now it's just a software on your computer. And whenever you're done installing it, just run it. And for the first time you run it, it'll probably ask you if you wanna create an account. I didn't create an account. As you can see here, it says I'm not signed in. I just, I just click the option to continue as a guest. And you can do the same thing. So you don't have to run an account. You don't have to create an account. You don't have to run it with an account. Just continue as a guest and then we can see what's going on. Now, they have a couple options here is what is a container? How do I run a container? 
Um, you can view that separately. I'm not gonna really get into what Docker is, but whenever you execute code, you can have it inside of a inside of a container here that whenever you execute it, if something were to happen, well, it's just contained, it's just within this container. You don't have to worry about running it locally in case there's some breach of security. And that's really the whole thing why they are wanting to by default have you use Docker is for security purposes. So with that said, now once it's running, like if you have a Mac up here, you know, you can see that Docker desktop is running. That's it. That's all you need to do. Now we can go back to the code that we had. Okay, we can get rid of this use Docker because by default it's gonna be true. And if we try to run this again, Python 3 main.py with Docker running, and it's now set to true by default, it runs, right? As you can see, it runs. If it didn't successfully run, we would get the same error before because we didn't have Docker running. But now that we do, it's trying to actually run uh, it's trying to run the chat that I want with between the user proxy and assistant agent. Okay, I know this was a quick video, but I needed to show you this because if you happen to upgrade and you didn't know about this, then you were just gonna wonder what in the world was going on. Okay, not maybe not all of you, but even me, I would have been like, wait, why was it such a breaking change if I didn't see that now they're using Docker by default for code execution? So if you don't wanna care about Docker again, I just had a couple examples where you just set the property use Docker to false in the user proxy agent so that if you want to execute code, you just do it locally. You don't have to worry about doing it inside of a Docker container. If you have any more questions or if you have any comments, please post them below. Now, one more thing is I have to update all of my projects, okay? So by the weekend, they'll all be updated. So if you upgrade and then you try to run one of my projects on GitHub and it doesn't work, well, it's probably because I never really used it because it didn't really matter before, but now it does. So I need to update them to set them all to false by default. And then that'll give you the option to set them to true if you if you want to. Thank you for watching. If you want to watch more content about Autogen, please click this video above and I'll see you next time.